ओम सर्वे भवंत सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित दुख भाग भवेत ओम शांति 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 लॉर्ड लिट ऑल बी हैप्पी लिट ऑल बी हेल्दी लिट ऑल अटेन गुडनेस लेट नन गेट मिजरी ओम पीस 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 Dear friends, it's a great pleasure meeting you all this evening. At the outset, I am thankful to the organizers for giving me this opportunity of meeting you all, and especially to Sharad Sagar, who is an alumni from this place, uh, for making it possible for me to come here and to have interaction with you. Beautiful campus, wonderful. place here in the chapel we are sitting automatically we are having peace of mind you see uh, there is something called pma what is that positive mental attitude if you have pma you will always have advantage For example, now today there was inclement weather. There was heavy rain, and normally what is done in India is to cancel the program. Instead of that, with so much of such a, in, in spite of this weather, in spite of so much cold, and at these late hours, you all come. that is great and i really admire you for your sincerity and for your interest so when the people are more the message goes to more people but when the attendance thing the positive thing about it is that we can have two way traffic we can have more of interaction so what i would like is that to spend more time with you in interaction and it will be an informal type of talk now i would like to know how many of you are undergraduate students please raise your hand so oh, most of the undergraduate and uh, postgraduate doctorate very good. so most of you are undergraduate students so then next question is how many of you want success in life please raise your hand success okay long term success or short term success which success you want long term or short term <laughs> only short term or long term <laughs> all of you want long term so remember the formula if you want short term success you have to work for a short time and if you want long term success you have to work for a long time <laughs> so that is the one formula you must remember there is something called everlasting success about which i will tell you later on happiness how many of you want happiness all of you want happiness very nice long term happiness or short term happiness long term happiness okay again you have to work for a long time for getting long term happiness and there is something called everlasting happiness about which i'll say to you now all of you are very intelligent you are the cream of the cream of the cream of the society of the whole world not only in america but some of you have come from various countries so you are very fortunate that you are studying in one of the best universities of the whole world this is very good and this has been possible 
because all of you have got very high IQ, exceptionally high IQ and that's why you are here. So happiness, success are assured for you because naturally you will have good package, you will have good career development, you will have good money and then you will have good happiness, success, everything will follow. Since you are here, everything has to follow. No problem about that. So all of you got high IQ, no problem. But if you want long term happiness and long term success, then you have to have one more thing. What is that? EQ. Emotional quotient. Emotional intelligence. Daniel Goldman made a research in 1991 and said EQ is more important than IQ. And the latest discovery of the modern science is SQ. Dana Zohar, she is a professor in Oxford University, she has written a book, the name of the book is SQ, Spiritual Intelligence, the Ultimate Intelligence, where she says neurologically, biologically, physiologically, psychologically, from every point of view, there is a concluding evidence, there is something called SQ, which is the basis of both IQ and EQ. What is IQ? Intelligence quotient. IQ will tell you how to play the game of life. What is EQ? EQ will tell you how to play the game of life under changed circumstances with changed strategies. And what is SQ? Well, SQ will tell you whether to play the game of life at all or not. That is your choice. What is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? Why are you here on this earth? What do you want to achieve before we die? So that we can die with a smile on our lips. That is SQ. So if you want total fulfillment in life, everlasting happiness, everlasting peace, then we must have not only IQ and EQ but also SQ. So all the three will give you not only long term happiness and long term peace and long term success but everlasting happiness, everlasting success and everlasting peace. So that is the outer periphery of the whole thing. Now there is a beautiful story that is given in that book, Dana Zohar, SQ Spiritual Intelligence, Ultimate Intelligence. There is a beautiful story that is given. I will give a little in a different way, but the same story. By the side of the Mexican coast, there was a management consultant who was sitting there. It was afternoon and just a little long distance, there was a fisherman sleeping in his boat. And it was afternoon, so that management consultant said, Hey, what are you doing? Why are you not fishing? Then uh, he was sleeping, he said, You see, sir, in the very morning I got a very big catch. So I sold that fish, I got a lot of money, and that is sufficient for my two days expenditure. My quota is over, and so I am sleeping. What? Is there any quota system here? You must earn more money. You must put more fish and more and more money. But what you will do with the extra money? Already I have fulfilled my today's needs. Why? You should deposit. You never heard the word deposit. Yes. Then open a bank account and deposit money. Then go on depositing and when you got a lot of money, you purchase another boat. Then you will get more fishes, then more money. What do I have with that money? Again purchase another boat. Go on depositing, go on purchasing boat, then you will become CEO of a multinational company. <laughs> then you move your headquarters from Mexico to New York and it's a global company and you will go all over the world, getting the orders, looking after the company, open up branches all over the world, naturally you will have a lot of branches, you will have to have travel more and then naturally you will have deep blood pressure, you will have bypass surgery. When three bypass surgeries and doctor says no more, then you sell the company, retire, come to me. I am an investment expert from Harvard University. I will tell you where to invest the money and then when you invest like this, every month you will get fixed income and you will be able to sleep nicely. 
I was sleeping nicely. It is you woke me up. <laughs> I was sleeping nicely. Such a roundabout procedure. Dana Zubar says, this fisherman has got low IQ. He doesn't know how to make money. This management consultant has got high IQ. He knows how to make money. But a fisherman has got high SQ. He knows the purpose of life is to have happiness and peace. But this management consultant has got low SQ. He doesn't know what is the real purpose of life. We have lost the purpose of life. I asked many youngsters, what is the goal of life? Well, I want to become so and so, so and so. And then I become so and so, then so and so. Yes, what is the ultimate aim of life? I never thought about it. When will you start thinking? After your time? When will you start thinking? When you sit in the car, the first question you ask, where do you want to go? Already car has gone long distance, 25 years, 23 years, 26 years, 30 years. Already the car is going full speed. But where do you want to go? I don't know. We are all running. There's a beautiful Zen story. A horse was galloping at full speed. Somebody asked the person, hey, where are you going? He said, ask the horse. <laughs> because I am not taking the horse. Horse is taking me. <laughs> we are not leading the life. Life is leading us. We do not know where we are going. What do we want to achieve in this life? So that at the time of death, we don't have regrets. Now, you are all intelligent people. You must start asking this question. What do we want to achieve before I die? The real ultimate aim and purpose of life. The earlier you start, the better it is. You know in Olympic, the person who steps out first step, he wins the game. The first step is important. How quickly you put the first step? So you are in the prime of your youth. This is the right time when you can think of what is the ultimate aim of my life. That does not mean you will not give attention to your studies. Of course you have to give maximum attention to your studies. But even in your studies also, this SQ will help you. How I will tell you. Ralph Waldo Emerson, you must have heard his name, a great thinker from America. Ralph Waldo Emerson. He said, the secret of success in trade, in war, in every management of human affairs is the concentration of mind. Studies, sports, games, music, name anything. The secret is, what is the secret? Concentration of mind. And Swami Vivekananda, who is our leader, as you just now heard, Swami Vivekananda started Ramakrishna order, to which I belong. I am a monk of the Ramakrishna order, which was started by Swami Vivekananda in 1897. Swami Vivekananda said, if I have to do my education over again, I will not undergo the present system of education. First, I will learn how to control my mind, how to concentrate my mind. Information I can have at my own will. Google to Google search. All the information at your team. So education, education is not the amount of information that goes into your brain and runs undigested all your life. Education is the assimilation of ideas. Education is managing your mind, managing your life. Real education is the education of life. So Swami Vivekan wanted more of concentration. He had so much of concentration, yet he wanted more. How much he had? I will give you only two examples. You know the headquarters of Ramakrishna Martin Mission, the whole order, we have 225 branches all over the world. One is in Boston also, the Dante Society. Here in America, the centers of Ramakrishna Mission are called by the name Vedanta Societies. But in India, they are called by Ramakrishna Mission. So, 225 branches, 225 branches, the headquarters is in Beirut, which is near Kolkata. If you go there, to Belu you will find a big temple of Sri Ramakrishna. Just behind that, there is a two-story building. On the first floor, there is a room in which Swami Vivekananda used to stay. That room is preserved as it is. You feel as if Swami Vivekananda is still there. His turban, his clothes, his stick, his table, his chair, everything is there. It is in this room that Swami Vivekananda 
gave up his body in meditation on 4th July 1902 because he loved America. He chose for his independence the Independent Day of America. He was more he was more beloved of Americans and he loved America very much. So he chose that date for independence from his body, the Independence Day of America, 4th July 1902, at the age of 39 years. What I am talking about is the incident that took place in that very room before his final departure. Swami Vivekananda was reading a book. The name of the book is Encyclopedia Britannica. You know, big volumes are there. They were all spread all over the floor. At that time, his disciple came. The name of the disciple is Sharat Chandra Chakravarti. He writes in his diary that when they went there, all the books were spread all over the floor. So many books. He said, Swami, he told Swami, my God, so many books. It will take whole lifetime to finish all these books. Swami Vivekananda said, what do you say? Only a few days back these books have arrived. I have already finished the 10 volumes and now I am reading the 11th volume. What do you say? Such big volumes you have finished this within few days? I can't believe it. You don't believe it? Okay. From the first 10 volumes you ask any questions that you want to ask. And the disciple asked so many questions and Swami replied all the questions. Sometimes quoting the very language of the book. Then the disciple was very much astonished. Yes, Swamiji, this is miracle. Swamiji said, it is not miracle. What is that? Power of concentration of mind. So if you have concentration of mind, 10 hours study can be done in one hour. Some students ask me, sir, what is, how is it possible 10 hours study in one hour? I say it is possible because at present we are doing one hour study in 10 hours. We are sitting for study and sometimes the eyes are in the book and the mind wanders here and there, which picture I have to see and what food I have to take. So many questions they come and no, 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 I am studying, I am studying. Or if you are loving somebody, then his face or her face comes in the book. And then you start thinking about him or her. And I get, no, 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 I am studying. So we are doing 10 hours study, one hour study in 10 hours. When you get concentration of mind, 10 hours study in one hour. And not only really study, in every department of life, you will get success. You will get more success. Sports, games, music. When Swami Vivekananda came to America second time, first time as you know, he came for delivering his historic speech on the 11th September 1893. Mind you, that was also 9-11. In Chicago, World Parliament Religious. And because we did not listen to his message of harmony of religion, there was another 9-11. I am going to talk about both 9-11 in New York on 25th of this month. So 9-11 to 9-11. So Swamiji came for that Chicago Parliament He had to stay on for three and a half years in America. Was, uh, he was so much in demand. 1897 he returned to India, established Ramakrishna Mission. Again 1899 he was at invited here. That is the first time he went to the western coast of America. So when he was in California, there is a beautiful place there in California called Camp Taylor. So Swamiji was going through the bridge. It was a wooden bridge at that time. And that time he saw four cowboys trying to shoot at the axes that were floating in water. Now, the, there was a string of 12 axles they were floating in water and these four cowboys were trying to shoot at the axles that were floating in water. Their shots were going in vain. After some time, Swamiji was looking at them and after some time, Swamiji started smiling. These four cowboys became very much annoyed. What? You are laughing at us? Is it a small job to shoot at the axles that are floating in water? Okay, let us see how do you do it. And they handed over the gun to Swami Vivekananda. What to do? So Swami Vivekananda took up the gun and shoot at the axis, fart, 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 fart. Twelve axes gone in twelve shots. And these cowboys became very much astonished. Swami, how long you are practicing? We are practicing for five years, we could not do it. How long you are practicing? Swami Vivekananda said, My dear friends, I am holding the gun for the first time. Huh? First time? And you still all the axes gone. That is a miracle. Swami said that is not miracle. What is that? It is the power of concentration of mind. 
So concentration of mind will lead you to success in everything. How many of you want success? Success and how many of you want concentration of mind? Do you want concentration of mind? Okay. Then simple formula. Remember, C is directly proportional to P. Where C is equal to concentration of mind and P is equal to purity of mind. Purer the mind, greater is the concentration of mind. Because it becomes easier to control the mind when the mind is pure. How purity will come? Purity will come by pure intake. Intake that we take through mouth, through the ears and through the eyes. I do not know where is. there are some Indians here maybe knowing about Mahatma Gandhi. Mahatma Gandhi used to keep in his room an image of three monkeys. Out of which one monkey was having two eyes closed, another monkey two ears closed and third monkey mouth closed. Meaning thereby don't look at evil, don't listen to evil, don't speak evil. Some of you might be aware about three monkeys of Gandhiji. Now I will tell you about three monkeys of Switzerland. One of Swamiji had gone to Switzerland for preaching Vedanta. There he saw by the side of a pond, by the side of a big lap, there was an image of three monkeys, but very strange image, very strange image, strange monkeys. One monkey was having one eye closed, one open. <laughs> Second monkey, one ear closed, one open. And third monkey, half mouth closed, half open. He had never seen such monkeys. And what is the message that these three monkeys are giving? He thought for a great while, suddenly he remembered a shloka from the Vedas and he understood the message. What was the, which was the shloka? Badram karne vishnuyama deva, badram pashe makshavi jatra, sire rakke sustu vagam sastanu vihi, vishema deva hitayadayu, swastina indro vritashava, swastina pusha vishwa veda, swastina stakshu aristanami, swastino brespati dadatu, badram karne vishnuyama deva. Listen to good things. One ear is told, don't listen to bad things. But one ear is open, listen to good things. One eye is closed, don't look at evil things. One eye is open, but see good things. Don't look at bad pictures. Please see good pictures. Don't read books that disturb your concentration. Read the books of positive thinking. Read the books of self-development. Half mouth is closed, don't criticize others. But half mouth is open but have a word of appreciation for others. So, if we take good intake from our senses and do not take it good, pure, impure intake, gradually our senses, our mind becomes pure. When the mind becomes pure, we will have concentration of mind. And once we have concentration of mind, then we will have concentration of mind will give you to success in everything, in every endeavor of life. Now, coming back to SQ, how to develop SQ? The whole science, the technique of developing SQ has been given by Swami Vivekananda in his book on Raj Yoga. One paragraph only you have to remember, where he says, Each soul is potentially divine. The goal of human life is to manifest this divinity within by controlling nature external and internal. Do this either by work or worship or psychic control or philosophy by one or more or all of these and be free. This is the whole of religion. Doctrines, dogmas, rituals, worships, temples, churches, mosques are but secondary details. And how do you know a person has manifested the divinity within? How do you measure it? Very beautiful test has been given by Swami Vivekananda. He says, unselfishness is the test of religion. Real religion, spirituality, what we mean, spirituality. You see, religion has got two connotations. Religion has got one is following certain rituals, believing in certain things, but spirituality says you do not believe in anything. Do good and be good. And try to have manifestation of inner divinity. 
Now, if that is the goal, manifestation of the divinity, that will develop your SQ. So, development with SQ, there are four methods of development of SQ, which will in turn give rise to everlasting happiness, everlasting peace and fulfillment of life. What are the four methods? In terms of the modern language, we will say yoga. Yoga has got a different connotation nowadays. They say, yes, yes, I am doing yoga. Oh, that is not yoga. You are doing some physical exercise. That is not yoga. What is real yoga is these four yogas. What Swami Vivekananda preached 125 years back. Four yogas. What are the four yogas? Raj Yoga. That is the yoga means union between the individual self and the supreme self. That is yoga. Yoga means union between the individual consciousness and the collective consciousness. Once you have meeting between the two consciousness, what happens? Infinite happiness, infinite bliss, eternal life. Satchit Ananda. Now, four methods basically. One is Raja Yoga, one is Bhakti Yoga, one is Jnana Yoga, fourth is Karma Yoga. What is Raja Yoga? Raja Yoga is eight steps. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayam, Pratyahar, Dharana, Dhyan and Samadhi. Yama is five. Satya, Asteya, Brahmacharya, Aparigra, Ahisa. Satya means truth. Asteya, non-stealing. Brahmacharya, continuous. Aparigra, non-covetousness. And Ahisa, non-violence. If you practice these five virtues, that is all ethical and moral principles, and meditate, gradually that meditation will lead us to a stage where we go beyond time, space and position called Samadhi and that gives you infinite happiness and peace. That is Raja Yoga. Bhakti Yoga is the path of devotion. Christianity, Islam, these are the religions that are devoted to path of devotion where you pray to God, you repeat a mantra, you love the God, love the God, they are, they love thy God, love thy God, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy heart, that is Bhakti Yoga, the religion of love. Third is Jnana Yoga, that is trying to understand our true nature, who am I? Am I this body? Am I this mind? No. My real reality, my ultimate reality, I am beyond this mind and body complex. Because when I say I have got a body, my body is not good, I have got a headache, my head is not working, my hands are not working. That means I and hands are different. This is my body. My body is not good, not, not well today. Am I the mind? No. I am, I am angry. So, today my intellect is not working. That means I am separate from the intellect, separate from the body, body separate from the mind. Am I the ego? No. I have got a very strong ego. Okay, don't come to me, I'll tell you, I'll take revenge on you, I have got a great ego. So, I am ego or different. Who am I? I am beyond this. That is Satchit Ananda. Chidananda Rupa Shiva Hom Shiva. Buddhism, Jainism and some other religions, they follow this Jnana Yoga. Fourth is Karma Yoga. This is a special gift of Swami Vivekananda to the modern world where he says, by wherever you are, whatever work you are doing, can be converted to worship. You need not go to churches, mosques, or temples. You may go there, but even if you do not go, but if you do good and be good, by that very thing, because of the power of good actions, you will come to the point where this eternal happiness, eternal peace will come to you, development of peace will come to you. I will give an example of what Swami, how Swami Vivekananda taught this Karma Yoga or Trusteeship Management. When Swamiji was in America here for the Parliament of Regions, Chicago, first Parliament of World Region, what I was attending was the seventh Parliament of Regions, Toronto from 1 to 7 November. The first was in Chicago. After that, Swamiji had to stay back as I told you. And Swamiji was in, Vivekananda was there in 1894. 
At that time, the richest person in the world was John D. Rockefeller, the emperor of petroleum industry. He was going through a very bad patch in his life. All his hair had gone, he had become bald, he had become initiated, was terribly depressed. That time somebody told him, why don't you come to my friend's house and uh, meet an Indian yogi. And maybe by getting advice from him, uh, you will get peace of mind. Rockefeller said, what? I have to go to a beggar for getting advice. You know, we are all beggars. We are monks. We live on charity. What? I have to go to a beggar. I will not go. He did not go. One fine morning, suddenly, he came to the place where Swami Vivekan was staying. He called the bell. The butler opened the door. He went inside. Swami was not in his drawing room. He was in his study room. He went inside the study room without being announced. And then Swami Vivekan had, you know, you had a tremendous power of concentration. He would do one thing at a time. He was so much absorbed in his study, he did not notice Rockefeller coming. Rockefeller stood for some time, knocked at the table. Then Swamiji looked up. Rockefeller said, I am Rockefeller. Swamiji said, What do you want? He was not prepared for this type of treatment. Rockefeller was a big name. The President of America would get up from the seat. And here is the beggar sitting and asking, what do you want? He became very much an, I don't want anything. Then Swami Vivekan asked, then why have you come? Now he had no answer because he had come without invitation. Then Swami Vivekan said, I, my dear Rockefeller, I know why you have come. You have come here because you do not have peace of mind. Then he started narrating many incidents from the life of Swami Vivekanan, from, from the life of Rockefeller, which no one else knew except Rockefeller. Then Rockefeller became very much excited. Who is to all this thing to you? How do you come to know? Swami so smiled and said, Do you think it is necessary somebody should tell me? I can see through your mind as I can see through a glass cell. Then he was not first. My God, he has come to know all my secrets. Then Swami said, My dear Rockefeller, remember, you are not the owner of your wealth. You are only custodian of your wealth given to you by God. Utilize this money for removing the sufferings of millions of people. Immediately you will get peace of mind. There is no other way by which you can get peace of mind. And Rockefeller was very much annoyed. How dare you advise me like this? And he never, in advice, he left abruptly the place as abruptly had come. But after a few days again he came. Similar fashion, called the bell, the butler opened the door, he went inside, Swamiji was not in his drawing room, so he went to the study room, Swamiji was fully absorbed, again he knocked at the table, then Swamiji looked up, then he put a piece of paper in which he had made an announcement of a very huge donation for a public cause. Then Swamiji read it, Rockefeller said, now you must thank me, I followed your advice. Swamiji said, well it is for you to thank me. Because by following my advice, you will get peace of mind, which cannot be purchased in the market. That was a very huge donation. I do not know what it was. In the books, of, in our books, only this incident has been given. But there is not the name of the institution. But in 2010, my first visit to USA, I went to the University of Chicago. There I found there is a statue of uh, John, John D. Rockefeller uh, and there it is written that he gave a very huge donation for Chicago University in 1894. So this is my case, I may be wrong, it may be that for that public purpose, whatever it is. Main thing is that Rockefeller started giving lot of donations. He used to give a donation earlier also, but now he became more enthusiastic in giving donation. 1913, he started Rockefeller Foundation, out of which Rockefeller Foundation many researches have been done. David Pollock made a research on drought resistant wheat, which saved millions of people from starvation. Many researches have been done. And Rockefeller says in his own life story that there is more to life than only earning money, but we must serve others. He doesn't give the name of Vivekananda in his biography, whatever. But he says the same principle that Swami Vivekananda told. Let us leave for others. Always Swami Vivekananda said, Swami Vivekananda wrote a beautiful letter, inspiring letter to the Prince of Mysore. My dear Prince, this life is short. 
the vanities of this world are transient. In this short life, they alone live who live for others. The rest are more dead than alive. Let us be living people. Let us not be dead persons. Let us live for others. At present, you are students, very brilliant students, very intelligent. I want you to develop your career, study with full concentration of mind. Don't get diverted here and there. Focus on your study and uh, get very good marks, very good grades. Develop your career. At the same time, remember, if you want to develop, if you want to have long-term happiness, long-term peace, everlasting happiness, everlasting peace, EQ IQ is not enough. You must have EQ. You also must have SQ, for which you should try to practice all the four yogas. Do not give much time. I understand you have a shortage of time. How you are very serious students, but at least some time. How can you practice these four yogas, keeping your studies, your college students? I'll tell you. Get up early in the morning. Well, if not possible, doesn't. Don't worry. Whenever you get up, I know most of the people they start sleeping after the morning. Whole night they are studying. This is a different trend that has come in India also. Don't worry. <laughs> it's all everywhere. Student community all. It's a global student community. Whatever it is. Whenever you get up, the first thing you should do is to pray. Just one minute, two minutes prayer. One two minutes, sixty second. Then meditation. One minute, two minute. I am not telling you hours of meditation. Just one or two minutes meditation. If there is one minute manager, there are books, <laughs> series of books on one minute manager. I will tell you one minute, one minute meditation, one minute prayer. Then at least for five minutes. Some inspirational reading, any book. It may not be a religious book; doesn't matter. Any book that is very inspiring, that gives you positive thinking, that gives you inspiration. Read that book, or maybe uh, now the soft copies are available. Go to the internet. Something you download. Similar, same thing should be repeated while gliding into sleep. Before sleep, one minute meditation, one minute prayer. Five minutes of inspiration reading, and whole day you do karma yoga because your students, your basic duty is to study well. You do whole day study. Of course, you must have some recreation, some entertainment. That also you do. But if you combine these four yogas like this, gradually you will find <coughs> you will find you are getting happiness every day. You are getting success every day. You are getting peace of mind every day, and the more you practice like this, ultimately culminating in when you develop this SQ to the full extent, you get eternal happiness, eternal life, and <coughs> eternal peace. So I pray to God that uh, may we get the strength. To follow all these four yogas in our daily life, develop IQ, EQ, and SQ, all the three. Get happiness, short term, long term, and everlasting. Get peace of mind, short term, long term, everlasting. And success, short term, long term, everlasting. May we get all the three. This is my prayer to the Lord. I'm very happy to meet all of you. I want to reserve more time for question answers, so I end here. Thank you very much.